All right, this is Mr. Ng going over the Chapter 4B test um, taken April 16th, 2019. This is version D. This was the uh, students who had taken it after the, I don't know, first week or something like that. Uh, the period of the graph of a function f of x equals tangent of 2 pi x is, so the period for uh, tangent is pi over b. Now, all the other tr four trig functions, sine, cosecant, cosine, and secant, they all have a period of 2 pi over b. So this was a common mistake for students. So your period is found by your b value, and your b value um, is everything to the left of the x. So that would be um, b is equal to 2 pi. Now if your b value is 2 pi and the period for tangent is pi over b, this would be pi over b. Um, so pi divided by b. So this is my b value. I just turned it sideways. right? And then I make pi a fraction by putting over 1. The division sign turns into multiplication, and then you split these, you get pi over pi times 1 over 1 over 2 pi, and then the pi's will cancel here. And you're just left multiplying across a 1 over 2. So 1 half and 1 half is 0.5, choice A. Question number 2 is the arc cosine of negative 1 half. Arc cosine of negative 1 half equals theta. If I take the inverse, because that's what arc means, you get cosine of theta alpha equals negative one half. Cosine of an angle equals negative half. So the question is, where is cosine negative? So if I draw my little unit circle here, I have this acronym, all students take calculus, and then all and cosine and secant are positive in these two quadrants, but I put an x here because now you're only in these two quadrants where cosine is negative. If you use my counting technique, one, two, three, three, two, one, cosine is the first order pair. Remember, you make those all square roots and fractions of two, so cosine would be negative one half at these locations. And those two locations would be um, 3 pi over 6, so 4 pi over 6, which is um, 2 pi over 3. And then this is 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, so this would, no, 9 pi over 6. So this would be 8 pi over 6 or 4 pi over 3. Now remember, you're taking the inverse of cosine, and the restriction of the domain, or the new range, would be cosine is between 0 and pi. And if you make those equivalent fractions, you would have 0 pi over 3, and this would be 3 pi over 3. So which of these is between 0 pi over 3 and 3 pi over 3? That would be um, this choice right here, and that would be D. Letter, question number 3, the graph y equals sine x is shifted a distance of pi over, two, pi over 12 to the left, reflected in the x-axis. Um, and then translated five units downward, then stretched by a factor of four. So every time I read something, shifted to the left, C is your left or right, C equals negative pi over 12. When it's reflected over the x axis, that means the leading coefficient, your A value is negative one, and your D value, where it says translated five units down, that's your D value, so it's going down is going to be negative five, so D equals negative five, and then stretched, um, by a factor of 4, this is your a value, so a is 4. So notice here I wrote down the transformation of a trig function. Your a is in front, your b is after your trig function, before the parentheses. Your c value is inside, and your d value is here. Remember in your formula there, you must have this minus sign. It's there. So if you substitute in your numbers here, a is a negative 1 and it's 4, so negative 4. Your b value, which it doesn't tell us, unless that told us something about the period, which it did not, so there would be a 1. Your x value is the same. Remember, your minus sign has to be there. And your c value, when you substitute it in here, is a negative pi over 12, and your d is a negative 5. Opposite of a negative is a positive, so you have y equals negative 4 sine parentheses x plus pi over 12 minus 5, and that would be choice C. So shift it down 5 units to the left pi over 12, 
and then flips upside down, and then amplitude increased by 4. Question number 4. Determine the amplitude and the period of f of x equals 2 cosine x over 5. Angles are measured in radians. So in this problem, you might want to see that um, another way of writing the equation is 2 cosine 1 fifth x. Right, because if you make x a fraction, you'll notice that the 1x is in the numerator and 5 is in the denominator. Now, if you put your letters below or above it, you have a cosine bx. And that should tell you that your a value here is 2 and your b value is 1 fifth. So if I know that my a value is 2, your choices are now b and, b and c. And then to figure out the period for cosine is 2 pi over b, and my b value we found out to be 1 fifth. Change the division to multiplication flip, so you have 2 pi times 5, so that means your period is equal to 10 pi, and that would be choice C. Uh, remember, uh, version D was out of 100 points. Um, this was 7, 7 or 0, and then Ken Ken is 1 or 5, and then there's your solution. The front side should have been out of 35. Let's go to the back side. Find the exact value. We have the tangent, and you need to find the tangent of this value. But in this value, you have sine, the inverse of sine, of negative 1 over radical 2. We learned in class that you can take the second part and just call it alpha. So basically, alpha is equal to inverse of sine of negative 1 over radical 2, which I have here. The end result is you're finding tangent of alpha. Um, when you restrict the domain for sine, it's going to be between negative pi over 2. Let's see if I can get a color to help us here. And pi over 2, which means that in the purple, this is the area that my graph's going to be in. It's going to be one of those two quadrants. So alpha equals the inverse of sine of negative 1 over radical 2. Now, a lot of you guys were tempted to just, um, there's a common mistakes. The common mistake is not to see a radical there, so a lot of, so a lot of students do negative 1 half, which is incorrect. Another one of the ways that a lot of students wanted to rationalize, and it's not wrong to rationalize at this point, but sometimes if you don't need to do it, then don't do it. So I take the inverse. The inverse tells me to switch these. So I circle those and switch these. So now I have the negative 1 over radical 2 equals sine of alpha. Here I did cho I chose to rationalize. So multiply by radical 2 over radical 2, and you have this. Sine is y over r. So your um, what did I choose to do? You can find where sine of an angle is negative radical 2 over 2. So um, this would help you identify that you're in a place where uh, sine is negative, which is in quadrants um, 3 and 4. But remember, because of the restriction of the domain, you're in quadrant 4. I chose to use here, before I rationalized, I did y equals negative 1 and r equals radical 2. Remember. Radius is always going to be positive. And then your y value must be negative because it's going down here. And then um, based on this triangle, you could, what did I use? Well, I recognize it's a 45, 45, 90. How did I know that? Remember, uh, anything with a radical 2 right here, um, the radical 2s are telling you it's a 45 degree triangle, so 45, 45, which means that these are sides are congruent. The isosceles, um, these sides are congruent. So if this is a 1, this is also 1, but remember it's negative, and then you can use Pythagorean theorem to solve it as well. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, but not necessary if you knew that this was an isosceles right triangle. Tangent is y over x, so negative 1 over positive 1 gives you a negative 1. So tangent alpha equals negative 1 is your correct answer. Uh, 
This question was out of 25 points, and I made it proportional to 1 out of 4, so that's usually how I grade your problems. And so um, if you do cross-multiply, you realize that each, problem, each point I normally give is now worth 6.25. So you got a 3 out of 4 if you miss the um, wrong quadrant, or you miss the plus or minus, or you forgot the restriction of the domain. If you did the inverse correctly and you got sine of alpha equals negative 1 over radical 2, then I at least give you uh, 2 points out of 4 or 12.5 out of 25. And then if you tried it, got 6.25. I do want to prove to you that, let's just say you did rationalize. Remember the bow tie? This is the bow tie. Right? Those students sound like they're really excited about math. All right, so here's alpha. Let's say you do rationalize and use this. So r would be um, 2. And the y value would be negative radical 2. And let's just say you don't even recognize um, isosceles right triangles. So let's, let's, let's call this a, let's call this one b, let's call this one c. You did something like this, C equals, or you can use X, Y's, and R's as well. So I have 2 squared equals A squared, which we don't know, and then B is negative radical 2 squared. So I got 4 equals A squared, and then negative times negative is a positive, and then radical 2 times radical is radical 4, and radical 4 is um, 2. Subtract 2 and you get 2 equals a squared. Take the square root. a is equal to plus or minus radical 2. I just switch sides. Um, and because a is positive, right, going towards the right, so it's a positive radical 2. And then if you do the same thing here, you can do the opposite of the adjacent or the y's over the x values. You get negative radical 2 over radical 2, which still reduces to negative 1 half, or negative 1. Last question. Graph following trig functions over one period, make sure to include a table of values and label your axes. I think I asked for a couple of things. I asked for you to make sure you have your letters, A, B, C, and D. You should be able to find the period. Have a table of values. Make sure in your graph that you have the x-intercepts correct, the shape of the graph, and then one point for accuracy. This was out of, normally when I graded it was out of six points, and then if you just make it proportional, that means each uh, point here is worth 6.67, and it is possible that you do get a zero. Uh, the first thing you should do, be able to do is get the letters. Remember, anytime you see a plus sign, you can change that to a minus a negative pi over 2. Remember, the formula has a minus sign, so this will help us identify that. A is a negative 2. Remember, we call this the fake amplitude for uh, tangent because um, amplitude talks about the minimum and maximum, and tangent doesn't have a minimum and maximum. Your B value, which is right here outside of that parenthesis, so there is no value, so it's a 1. Remember, for period, here's a common mistake. Uh, tangent has to have pi over B. It would be wrong if you wrote 2 pi over B. You put a 1 there, then our period is pi. That means the graph um, what happened? Our graph finishes over a uh, finishes in in Well, that's that's what the graph is looking at right now for one period. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And if you had a fifth point right here, which would be 3 pi over 4, and this would be pi, that would be your... The graph would kind of go up there. So that would show you that it finishes by pi. Your C value is negative pi over 2, so you're going to go left, uh, pi over 2, and remember my silly phrase, add to x, go west or left. There is no d value, there is no constant, it doesn't say plus 4 or 5 minus or something like that, so there's no d value. 
Remember automatically when you have the parentheses, when you have these parentheses, you're going to have to do a, a phase shift, which basically means you put um, everything to the right of the trig function. Let's see some colors here. Doesn't matter uh, which one you use. I use this one. You're going to put that between 0 and pi. Because your period um, for tangent finishes its graph by pi, so we want to know what happens in the shift. So in this problem, all you have to do is subtract pi over 2 from both sides. 0 is the same thing as 0 pi over 2. And pi, you've made it a fraction over 1, and then equivalent fraction would be 2 pi over 2. So 2 minus 1 gives you positive 1, so 1 pi over 2, or pi over 2. 0 minus 1 gives you negative 1, negative pi over 2. So my graph's going to start at negative pi over 2, which I have over here, and then I'm going to finish by pi over 2. And this actually helps me create the table of values. So here are my five points. So from here, let's see if I can do something. These values are going to be um, here and here. So here I need five points. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint. How do you find a midpoint? You just add the minimum and maximum. So we add the lower extrema. So negative 1 plus 1 gives you 0. And then you divide it by 2. And that would give you uh, 0. So 0 pi over 2 is the middle. And you notice here something you're counting by just once. Plus 1, plus 1. Negative 1, negative 1. Go in that direction. Now, I wouldn't want to do a half, so what I did is I equivalent fraction. So this becomes, if you double it, 2 over 2, I get negative 2 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, and 0 pi over 4. Then you'll recognize that you can count. Um, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then you add your pi over 4s in there. So you really basically what you're doing is you're just counting by um, pi over 4s. So essentially what we did here is that these are all your x values. Basically what we're doing here is the table is a table of values that um, you kind of do all the points all at one time. So I would say this is the long one and then I'll show you the short one. So you're going to take this value and you're going to add, because um, if you look over here, you're adding pi over 2 to it. So negative, negative 1 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 gives you 0 pi over 2 is 0. Negative pi over 4 plus, really this is 2 pi over 4, gives you 1 pi over 4. 0 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 gives you pi over 2. 1 pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 gives you 3 pi over 4. You can take this value and substitute it in there, or one of these two, because they're equivalent. doesn't matter. This one's probably best. So I have 1 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2 gives you 2 pi over 2, which reduces to pi. And so you have these uh, five values, your five x values, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. And this is the golden row for tangent. What do I mean by the golden row? It helps you find the basic... Um, graph of tangent. So then the next thing you're going to do is now find tangent at those values. So what's tangent at these values? Well, if I go tangent of 0 in my unit circle, tangent is y over x, so that would be 0 divided by 1, which is 0. Um, at pi over 4, that's here, that would be the order pair would be radical 2 over radical 2, which is 1. At pi, the order pair is 0, 1, so 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And then at pi over, sorry, 3 pi over 4, remember all students take calculus, so here tangent is negative. So that's verified by radical 2 over negative radical 2, which is negative 1. And then at pi, you have a 0 divided by negative 1, so 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. So I have these five values here, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to graph these. And my order pairs is negative pi over 2 and 0. So you go to negative pi over 2 and 0. Negative pi over 4 and 1. So what I did is I kind of circled 
my 5x values, and then this is the y value. So pi over 2 is 0, and then it's undefined, which is an asymptote. And then pi over 4, you have negative 1. And pi over 2, you have 0. So essentially, this is what you have in your graph. Looks something like this. Okay. Remember, tangent looks like a snake going in this direction. And tangent and cotangent, their properties have these three dots are in a line because their slope is essentially one. So if you ever want to expand it, then you can just, okay, look over here, and then you just have three dots in a row. And then you have your asymptote at a fifth point. So one, two, three, four, five. Count again, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth point there. So if you could expand it, or if you just had your graph that looks something like this, that'd be totally fine. So let's review what we did for that problem. You have the uh, one point for the letters, one point for the period, which is um, pi. You have a table of values. Let me show you the short way of doing the table of values. So this is the short. Your x and y table of values normally looks something like this. And you're still using the same five values I have in, in circles here. Let me just write those all down really quickly. Essentially that's 0, and then pi over 4, and then pi over 2. I'm not going to do all of these. We already know what the answer is. And I'll just randomly pick one. I'll just pick pi over 4. So how do I use that? Well, you don't have to essentially do all this work here. The pi over 4 goes in here. And you're doing the same thing, but in a different way. So pi over 4 plus, this is 2 pi over 4. That gives us 3 pi over 4. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. And then negative 1 times negative 2 gives you... Um, what happened? What happened? Um... Oh, we forgot to multiply by negative 2 here. That's what I forgot. So you need another row of 0, negative 2, um, undefined, and then 2, and then 0. So these are my five values I should have graphed. Let's take a look here. So let's graph those. So my graph is only tangent, and I forgot to take the inverse. So let's, let's graph those really quickly. Negative pi over 2 is still 0. Negative pi over 4 is negative 2. Let's just change this to be negative 2 and positive 2. And then um, pi over 4 is 2, and then 0. So your graph should look something like this. And then the asymptotes there in purple. And the reason why I caught myself because I was doing the table of values. So um, this should be, uh, so we said, let's do it again. Pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is pi over 4 plus three, 2 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is going to be a positive Two. So this is a positive 2. And this one's a negative 2. So essentially, you still get the same values, and you still kind of know need to know your shape. Um, so the one in purple is our graph for the negative 2 tangent x plus pi over 2. Um, so your x-intercepts are essentially these circled ones, or what you have on your graph there. The shape is that, well, tangent should go in this direction. And then um, accuracy, make sure there's anything wrong with that. So that side was at 65. And if you add 65 plus 35, it gives you uh, 100. Hope that was helpful for you on the test corrections.